So the final conclusion to the 94 Camry V6. So like I said, the customer picked it up from here, drove it home, and about four days later it started acting up again. I suspected a bad igniter, but we couldn't prove it because the car drove perfectly fine. He ended up, he said he smelled something electrical at the engine computer area. He took the engine computer uh, out of the car and popped the cover off and discovered there were some leaky capacitors on the board. So the engine computer was at fault for this intermittent misfire limp home problem. Uh, igniter is fine. So he ended up going to I think the Toyota dealership and got this remanufactured ECM engine control module for the Camry. And then he sent me the original so we can inspect it and maybe replace some leaky capacitors and you know refurbish it so he can have a spare one. Now let's take a close look see if the traces are still continuous. I want to uh, remove all the old leaky capacitors make sure the traces are you know not damaged and then we can install some brand new capacitors that I went to DigiKey and got the exact OEM, uh, exact same replacement capacitors that are installed in this engine computer. So let's take a look inside. Alright, so this is a two board ECM and let's take a peek. So as you can see, when you see the green nasty crusties with black around the base of a capacitor that means the electrolytes have leaked out this one the leg is actually broken that's the worst one so these two are you can read on the side they are 10 microfarad 15 volt units so that's two then we have another messy one right here a little bigger one 47 microfarad 63 volt and then we have three in a row up here that this one also leaked. That's a 220. And these two are 100 microfarads. So one, two, three, four, five, six capacitors that I want to replace. So I marked them all down, the locations and the orientation. You see the white stripe is facing this way and the replacements are exact same, same brand and value. Uh, so let's desolder these. Now I have the soldering station. I actually, a viewer sent me some genuine Amtec flux, just like uh, Northridge Fix uses for micro soldering. So we have that. Um, these are through hole components, so they shouldn't be too hard to remove. Just heat up that pin and pull it out with a tweezer, or, uh, well, we'll see. I do have a desoldering, you know, vacuum gun, but that's uh might not be necessary here. Let's get to work. So this is going to be a little hard to film. We don't need a microscope. This isn't a small board or anything. But I'm going to just gently pull on the capacitor while desoldering these legs right here. Maybe I should use low melt solder. Maybe these pins we can bend down after we heat up the joint. Let's put a little solder on our tip. Well, I guess we can put a little flux on there, right? Flux is your friend. That's what uh, Alex says, so he's the professional. You know, I don't do many board repairs, but, you know, it's fun to... I want to make sure that's the right component. Yes. And then the next one is over here. Okay, let's try. Desolder those pins.
Okay, so I bent that one down. So for through hole components, sometimes you can add a little bit of solder to help the process. There we go, that one bent, bent down. Um, now let me turn the computer over. And I don't know if you guys are able to see anything here. Where are my components? They're over here on this side. That's one, two. Let's add a little solder to here. And then use the chisel tip to pry this down. There we go. And then same with this one. Okay, perfect. Now, I'm going to hold on to the capacitor and pull it out. Right, here we go. Yep, it's coming out. This like is being a little stubborn. Try the other one. Almost out. Just have to hold on there for a little while because the board is pretty thick, so the heat must transfer and melt the solder on the back side too. Okay, got one out. I gotta repeat that six times. <laughs> Yeah, some people make it look easy. Alright, so I developed my own method to clean these holes out. Just put a needle on the back side and hold pressure on it, melt the solder, the needle goes right through. Hole is clean, so I got the new capacitors, those two, installed. And soldering the new ones on is easier than taking the old ones out. Alright, we'll put a little flux on. There and there and there. Now take our soldering iron. You want the solder to flow through the hole. So hold it on there long enough for that to happen. Is that better than factory? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> At least as good as factory. And then uh, I do have a little snipper tool here. So you cut the excess legs off. That way this is a uh, Exolite. Alright, so we got 
two capacitors installed and four to go. So hopefully these will be a little easier since now we have the method developed. All right, so here's the method. So I'm pushing the pin through the hole and you melt the solder till the pins all the way in and just wiggle it. It makes a nice through hole. So those two are out. Let's put the new capacitor in. Alright, so here's the new capacitor, 47 microfarads. That needle makes the perfect through holes. We'll put it to that depth. Just like OEM. Spread out the legs and for good luck. Put a little flux on there and there. Slide that sucker in. Make sure the solder wicked all the way up those legs, and we're done with this one. Three done, three to go. So this capacitor here really took a crap. The pins are actually bridging with the nasty crusties, and it looks a little bad on the board so I'm going to try to clean that up hopefully it didn't take off any traces with it see that one on the left we'll have to check that for continuity alright so the one trace I'm worried about is right here right next to the capacitor that runs from this resistor somewhere to the bulk connector so meter and diode mode I'm just checking for continuity that capacitor actually ate the trace away you know the coating but it is continuous and I want to see if it is continuous to any of the pins on this connector I'm just touching them one by one oh yep that one right there So the trace is undamaged, I mean it looks bad, the coating is gone, I wish I had that green what is it, solder mask <laughs> to put on there, but I don't, maybe some little dielectric grease to protect it, no big deal. So that capacitor is out, let's take these two out, since they're so close together, it's easier to grab them when this one's missing, and we've got just three more to install. Alright, so all the capacitors are out. The only thing I'm worried about are the traces going to this, the worst uh, capacitor. So this trace is fine, but does this leg connect to this green patch that got eaten away? I think it does. There's still copper there, maybe it's just the green mask that's messed up. But there's no real good way to tell. If that's uh, that's what it is, because the top leg here came off with it looks like a piece of trace, which is really not good. That would be the bottom hole, so I don't know where that would have connected to. But I'm just gonna put in all the capacitors and hand this thing back to the owner and tell him try it out on your car. If it works, great. If not, then well. At least it was a good learning experience. Alright, last capacitor. Cross your fingers that all the traces that need to be connected will get connected.
Make sure that's tight in there. Well, soldered to something. So. That's it. That's all we can do. So final update on the 94 Toyota Camry V6. I shipped the refurbished engine computer back to the owner and I asked him, can you reinstall this one and drive it around and let me know if all my efforts were uh, worth it, you know, soldering in six capacitors. It's been two weeks, the car's been running absolutely flawlessly, so he's going to keep that computer, the original engine computer, in the Camry, and now he has a spare, uh, you know, fresh one from, from the dealer, so I think that's a win, so that was the issue, leaky capacitors inside the engine computer. Um, not too hard of a repair DIY, just, you know, you want to make sure you purchase the correct replacement units, and uh, you do have to be proficient with a soldering iron. So happy ending on that one. I hope you enjoy that case study and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.